What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another D5 render tutorial for you. In today's video, we're gonna go through a very simple beginner workflow for getting a model from SketchUp through D5 render so that we can create a realistic rendering. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we have is we have a SketchUp model right here that we're gonna bring into D5 render. And so I thought I'd just show you how to take this model and bring it in and uh, how to adjust some of the things to get a realistic render without having to make too many changes. So first thing, I kind of follow a three-step process when I'm uh, taking things from SketchUp to a rendering program. So the first step is that I like to look at my model and make sure that I've got the right parts and pieces in here. You can see how this is a very simple space that I've basically created using 3D warehouse models. So I did go in and adjust some of the uh, materials on this uh, on this uh, end table because it was in here with a photo and that gets a little bit weird with your rendering. But you just want to take a look at this and make sure that all the things that you want are in here. So just give it the once over and think, okay, I want to show the bedside tables, I want the pictures on the wall, and I want the bed. And just make sure that everything's kind of set up. That way um, in the future, or when you get into your rendering program, you don't have to like come back and start making a bunch of changes because then things get a little bit messy. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this file and then we're gonna bring it into D5 Render. So to do that, you're gonna open up D5 Render and you can see how you have options in here for your recent files. I'm gonna click on Create New and then you're gonna find your model so in this case, um, I've named this the bedroom test current. So I'm gonna double click on that. You're gonna bring that into D5 Render. So when you do that, that's gonna import this model into D5 Render, and then we can take a look at it and start making changes. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over into walk view so that I can move around using my keyboard, using the W, A, S, and D keys instead of the 3D view, which is more of an orbit view. And so really there's two things we wanna adjust before we can export our rendering. So you're gonna to wanna to adjust your outdoor settings, you're gonna to wanna to affect, you're gonna to wanna to adjust your material settings. And then I guess there may be some post-processing that we're gonna do as well. So maybe three things that we wanna do. But we wanna start by setting up our environmental lighting, which in this case is going to be from the sun out the window right here. So what we wanna do is we wanna start by adjusting these settings inside of outdoor. And so the first thing I want is I want some sunlight coming in through this scene because right now, I mean, it's fine, but it's a little bit boring. It's not a very interesting scene. So what I wanna do is I just wanna adjust my time settings until I start getting sunlight through that window. So you can see how when you get sunlight through that window, now your image gets a little bit more interesting because you've got the different shadow lines and other things like that showing up in here. So we can start by adjusting that and then we can start playing around a little bit more with things like our sunlight intensity. So you can see how if you bring your sunlight intensity up, your scene's gonna be brighter. If you bring it down, your scene's not gonna be as bright. And also your shadows um, have a different level of pronouncement depending on how you set this. So I would not recommend if your scene is dim, cranking this up. Instead, we'll fix that with our exposure a little bit later. Um, but then the other thing you can do is you can adjust your solar height and also your angle to really kind of customize the way that your shadows are coming in through this rendering. So in this case, let's go ahead and set this up so that we've got our shadow coming across our bed kind of like this. Then you can also adjust your color temperature. So depending on if you want this to be kind of a whiter or bluer image or more of a yellow image, you can affect that using your color temperature. So and then I don't wanna to focus too much on our outdoor scene right now. Um, you can see how this does load in an outdoor scene and you can adjust that with different HDRI images. We're not planning on creating an image where we look out a window. You can see because I didn't even model a window that I'm not really concerned about that in this scene. We're going to go ahead and we can leave this as is for right now and if we need to we can always come back and adjust this. So one thing I would recommend is going in and adding a scene in your list so that you can come back to this later. So we can just click on list and I would recommend saving before you do this. This is still in beta and sometimes I get some get some weird issues with creating scenes but what we want to do is we want to go to our scene list and we want to click on the plus button and what that's going to do is that's going to save our scene with the associated settings and so the thing about that 
And I want to talk about this for a second too, but the thing about that is that's going to save all of our lighting settings that we'd set up in here, as well as our camera view, so we can go back to it really quickly. But notice that this also brought in my SketchUp scenes that I had saved inside of SketchUp. So that actually brings in those views that we had inside of SketchUp. So if you want to set up some views in SketchUp and then bring them in, you can do that. And so now let's take a quick look at our materials. And our materials are doing pretty good already, but let's see if we can add something to them. So inside of D5 Render, you can adjust your materials using this material picker. And the material picker is going to allow you to select different materials that are inside of your model. And so notice, for example, that when I mouse over this material, it's giving me a little selection box over this one as well. That's because that's the same material. So if we adjust this material once, it's going to adjust multiple times inside of this model wherever it occurs. But we can go ahead and click on this and let's go ahead and fly over here a little bit. Um, but you can see how when you select a material, and this is just a default SketchUp wood material, there's different settings that you can adjust in here. And so the first thing is there's some nice material templates that are in here for different things. So if this is like paint or something like that, you could select a car paint, or if it was water, you could select water. In this case, none of these really fit, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna adjust these settings. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust this so that our materials are a little bit more realistic. And so we can adjust these settings to make these materials do different things. So first of all, there's the option in here to load in different maps. So if you download materials from like Polygon or Megascans or something like that, you can load in your normal maps. Or you can see how if I click and drag this, this will also use the material that's in here in order to generate normals as well. And if you remember, normals make your materials look kind of bumpy. You can also adjust your roughness of your material to dictate how much light is going to be reflected based on that material. So there's also settings in here for like metalness and other things like that, which we're not going to focus on too much right now, uh, but those are definitely in there. And then you can also do some things with UV mapping. So you can see how I can actually adjust this so that my materials sit on faces in different ways, depending on how I adjust these sliders. You can see how I can move this up and down and kind of stretch it if I want to, or you can also move the materials. And we'll talk more about this in a future video, but you can see how I can actually move this material so that it sits on this face in a certain way. So you can see how I could actually rotate this if I wanted to so that it sits on the face a different way. But so what you want to do is you just want to go in here and you kind of want to adjust your materials. So for example, this floor, it's a little more reflective than I want it to be. So I would come in here, I would select that material, and so you can see how I can come in here and I can adjust the specular value to adjust how much light is bouncing off of this face. And one of the cool things about D5 Render is you can see how this is happening in real time. So this is actually simulating these reflections in real time. So in addition to being able to make changes to your materials, if you go up into the Assets button, there's actually a material library of different things you can download. So for example, there's an option here for Fabric. And so you can see how you can mouse over all of these and you can actually select different materials from this material library and download them. So for example, if I was to download this, let's go with the blue denim, you can click on this and this is going to work kind of in the background here for a second. And then once the little download arrow goes away, you can actually click on this and you can see how this indicates to you that you have that selected and you can actually mouse over different things and replace them. So like for example, you can see how I was able to replace this material on this fabric really quickly. And so you can also adjust this. And then like for example, if you were to go into the UV mapping, you can adjust the size and location of this map. So if you wanted the denim material to be a little smaller, you could change this using the horizontal stretch to be like 0.75 and 0.75 or something like that. And even that's a little big for me. So maybe 0.25. Maybe we need to go the other way. So we'll go to two and two. So you can see how that denim material looks a little bit better, but you can adjust that using your UV settings. And so you can also come in here if you want to and adjust things like your exposure values inside of your uh, inside of your filter settings. So you can see I can adjust this to add a little bit more contrast to my scene or um, other things like that. You can use the exposure to affect your overall brightness 
movie or scene. And if you want to, you can go in here and you can uh, click on this button for clay model. What clay model does is it gives you the ability to just look at your lighting and uh, your shadows without the materials in here. So there's an option here for that, but you can adjust all of these different settings, including like your color temperature. You can adjust the saturation of your colors if you want to. You can adjust all of those in your filter settings. And then we're gonna go up here to the render button. And we're gonna click on the button for render photo. So when we do that, we're gonna click on render photo. And it's gonna allow us to change a few different things like our camera, field of view. You can set your scale. You can set the size of this if you want. So I'm gonna render this to a 2K. And you can also set if this exports the extra um, the extra maps in here, like your material maps and other things like that. Then once you're done with that, you're just gonna click on the button for export. You're gonna open the location that you wanna put this. And then you're gonna name your render. So I'm just gonna call this bedroom render and click on save. And this is gonna go through and this is gonna render that image out so that you can take a look at it. Then once you're done, you can open this folder. So you can click on the button for open folder and you can see how your rendering is in here as well as your three different maps. So if I was to double click on this and open it up, you can see how I've got my bedroom render right here. I've got my ambient occlusion map, which you can use to highlight your shadows. You've got your material ID map and then you've got your reflection map. So all of these get rendered out and placed in that folder. So if you want to take this into Photoshop or something like that, you can definitely do that. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Are you using D5 Render? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.